privilege to introduce a giant of rock and roll, say Mr. Bob Daisley. G'day, Bob. I'm not that tall. <laughs> Best known to rock aficionados of the man that's played bass with just about everybody. Ozzy Osbourne, Uriah Heep, and uh, more latterly, the Living Loud Project is something that you've put together. Yeah, it was, um, it was put together last year uh, by Drew Thompson, uh, Thompson Management in, in uh, Melbourne. And uh, after Jimmy Barnes and I had done a little bit together at the uh, the John Lord gig at the basement mm. in February last year. Uh, Drew said to me, he said, you know, why don't you do something with Jimmy? And, uh, and Jimmy was up for it. And uh, with Drew's connections to the, uh, the Deep Purple camp and uh, organization, he suggested Steve Morse for guitar. And I said, well, you know, Steve's That'll be fine, a that. living legend. Yeah. <laughs> He's an, an amazing player. He's brilliant. And uh, Lee Kerslake was the drummer that I'd worked with, with Uriah Heep and, and also with uh, the first two Ozzy Osbourne records yeah. when the band was called The Blizzard of Oz and we, the first album was called just The Blizzard of Oz and then the second album was Diary of a Madman. I really wanted to do or redo some of the old original songs from those two albums. <laughs> album is yeah. called Relentless, correct? Yeah, we dropped the, the album title and just used the band name for the album. And from what I've read, mm -hmm. it's six tracks of old uh, Aussie and Blizzard of Oz songs and That's five right. originals. That's right. Why the decision to to redo the uh, Aussie songs? It's just something that I'd had in my head for probably, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 years or something. I used to talk to Lee about it. I, I used to say, you know, now that Randy's gone... It's I'm Randy Rhodes. Yeah, Randy Rhodes, yeah. sorry, yes. Um, um, wouldn't it be nice to do some kind of tribute to him and, and use some really class great players, you know, like maybe Steve Morse and Steve Vai and Gary Moore and, you know, people, and maybe Jakey Lee, people like that that could really handle the job and, and do it well. We should point out that you co-wrote uh, a lot of these songs. Yeah, I co-wrote co all of them. And I wrote all the lyrics for yeah. all those songs as well. So Because Ozzy wasn't a lyricist. No. <laughs> said there are six tracks yep. that you've redone of, of uh, Aussie and Blizzard of Oz, yep. Diary of a Man Man period. Right. But there are five originals. Yes. Um, the single that uh, we've been playing is In the Name of God. Right. Explain how the song came about and how UNICEF came to be involved in that song. The song came about at the end of our time writing the stuff, which was really, really crammed with work. It was a, a short period of, of time. I think we were at Steve Morse's place in Florida for about probably eight days and in that eight days we had to um, rearrange and write new parts for the, for the Aussie stuff and rehearse all that stuff and then write, first of all we'd written four more and then we thought well we need you know, at least one more song to, to balance the, uh, the, the ratio out of, of new stuff and old stuff and, um, and Steve started playing like a, a Spanishy sort of thing and I said well let's do an Eastern, more of an Easterny sort of thing and so we, we worked the music out together first 
And then uh, Jimmy came up with the idea of In the Name of God because it sounded sort of Eastern. And this was July 2003, mm -hmm. and this Iraq thing was, was going on. And, and we all know about that, what that's about, you know, the oil and the invasion of Iraq mm -hmm. by the uh, Illuminati. And, uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Getting there we go. Yeah, conspiracy well, theory. I could talk, oh, right, I could talk for here hours on that, but, yeah. <laughs> but we won't go there. The, the but, song uh, is about the hypocrisy and It's a and hypocrisy irony of how people are mind-controlled into religion and then yeah. kill each other in the name of it. Yeah. Regardless of religion, it's not pointing to one religion. It's just pointing to people in the name of God hurt their fellow man. The UNICEF involvement, how did that come um, I think uh, they contacted Drew, or Drew um, played them the song or something, and they thought it was a great idea to use a song like that to show um, people what was going on in those countries and, and how children were suffering, and, uh, and the benefits of this song will go, go to the, um, the children of those war-torn countries. So we, I wrote this set of lyrics then because I was pissed off. And we came in the studio and we wrote a tune about it. Um, so go out and buy the single and you do some good. Now I just gotta remember what I wrote. <laughs> who has played with a million bands and toured with a million bands and played on a million albums, Living Loud, is that a band or a project in, in your scheme of things? Well, I suppose really it started out that the idea was a project because yeah. right up until just before we all got together, we were still thinking along the lines of who we could get to guest on it. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll get Ronnie Dio to sing this song and, and maybe we'll get you know someone else to sing that one and maybe another guitar player. And I'd spoken to Gary Moore and he said, yeah, I'll do a couple of tracks for you and all that. But once we got together, within the first hour, we thought, oh, hello, something's yeah. happening here. And there was a real magic. And, it was, and so we thought, we don't want to change anything. So we got everybody that was involved there just to do all the tracks. And now it really does feel like a band. So it started out kind of like a project. but Yeah, it's evolved. It's, yeah. We have the king himself this morning on GMA. As lead guest, here's Jimmy Barnes. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. Nice to see you, pal. Good to see you, mate. Nine o'clock in the morning, and how do you feel? Mate, fantastic, is it? Yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? Jimmy Barnes, nine o'clock on, uh, on a Friday morning. I only get up this early for you, you know. Well, that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, a lot of music on the, the new album, a lot of stuff which I, I guess is pretty special to you because you've gone to a fair bit of trouble on this one, haven't you? Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a labour of love. It was something to do, you know, because... Uh, all these guys that I played with on this record are, are guys that I sort of grew up on, cut my teeth on as a, you know, as a young, young uh, you know, headbanger back in many, many, many moons ago. Who have you gathered together? There's Ozzy um, Osbourne. Oh, uh, no, it was, it was the, it's the bass player and drummer from uh, Ozzy Osbourne's band, a guy called Bob Daisley. Bob's played with everybody, you know, uh, Gary Moore, uh, Rainbow, 
um, White Snake. You know, he played. He's played with lots and lots of great, great people. Oh, he played in Ozzy's band and, and wrote a lot of those great tunes of Ozzy's. Um, Lee Kerslake, who plays, who played with Ozzy, and also played in a band called Uriah Heep. And I think Uriah Heep was the first album I ever bought yeah. when, I was, when I was about 13 or 14. Uh, Don Airy, who plays, who's played with everybody again, White Snake, uh, Rainbow. These are these are bands that I sort of cut my teeth on, by the way. And a guitar player called Steve Morse. And Steve Morse is uh, is just exceptional. He's um, he's the, probably one of the greatest you know technical guitar players in the world, rock and roll guitar players in the world. He won. There's an American guitar magazine called the Guitar Player, and he won the 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 poll for best guitar player six years in a row mm. and had to drop out so that somebody else could have a go after that. I think know, that was so. the Les Paul Award too. Yeah, that, he's, he's, uh, he's just won. awesome. This guy is, is frightening. So, you know, they, these, they, they were getting together and asked me to, to sort of come along and, and sort of scream a bit for them, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and it was just, it was fantastic. Where was it done, Jimmy? We went to Florida. Um, oh, I'm sorry, eventually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we went to Florida. Uh, it was, um, and it was all done in a, in a couple of weeks, actually. We went there and it just, because the guys were also talented and also good at what they did, it was just, no, boom. Easy. The single is pretty important because this is uh, one where there are no profits going to anyone who played yeah. on the uh, the single. It's going to a very special effort. Yeah, absolutely. I loved your opening, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you can go home afterwards. Though. Yeah. Um, the sing yeah. Well, I was in America and we were writing something. You know, we did the album sort of consists of half Ozzy Osbourne's uh, a couple of greatest hits, and then we did uh, we wrote a bunch of songs too. I was writing some songs. I was there just when you know when the war was breaking out and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I was just thinking about how how silly it is in this day and age that we're still bombing each other, you know, trying to you know make peace, uh, you know, with violence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, know? what do the profits go to? Uh, UNICEF to oh, the right. uh, the Children's Fund. Uh, uh, I'm I'm a global parent at the moment, which is uh, one of the, uh, the 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 things that UNICEF do. Uh, and I just I just think it goes it goes to help you know stop you know child trafficking, sex trafficking. Um, uh, slavery, it's going to uh, help victims of war, you know, um, and I just think, you know, we need to do everything we could at the moment, basically. <laughs> Let's take a second here and uh, introduce the man. This is uh, Lee Kerslake here on the drums. <laughs> Lee flew over special to do this. The poor bastard arrived in Sydney at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, and by sort of 11 o'clock he was in rehearsal. Uh, I think he's just getting over his jet lag and he's about to fly back again, so... Uh, this is Bob Daisy. It was basically Bob's uh, master plan to come up with this and uh, get together and do it, which I thought was a great idea. Donnie on the keyboards over here. We are blessed to have Don and Steve in the country with us. Steve Morse on the guitar. Well, I wish you well with uh, with Living Loud. It's uh, it's great music from uh, from Jimmy Barnes. It's the Jimmy we uh, we know and respect and expect. <laughs> uh, and but it's also with the the names there that he's mentioned already. It really yeah. is a combination of, of great musicians. Yeah, it's a it's a great thing. And you know the single, like I said, get out and buy it. And you can send some money to UNICEF too, which is a right. great thing to do. And this is the one. This is the the single in uh, in question. UNICEF will really uh, benefit if you buy a copy of this. And if you don't like the God. record, just give the money straight to UNICEF. Yeah, yeah fair we enough. We don't mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great to see you, Jimmy. No Thanks for coming in.